play to win the game. Hello? Oh, shit. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play. Congratulations, Green Bay. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Good hump day, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy I Joe Green. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I, I, I'm doing some things to remind myself, okay? This meltdown of the Green Bay Packers game that literally went viral. I want to. I don't want to forget that pain and suffering that happened with that. That that I can't even think of the right word for how bad the Cowboys were against Green Bay. My only saving grace is that the Eagles were just as bad in losing to us at least one game and losing to Tampa Bay, having not being able to beat Tampa Bay in the playoffs now, two of the last three years, and that Jalen Hurts came back down to earth, and that San Francisco coaching choked away another Super Bowl for the 49ers. So 49er fans have finally slowed down. So this offseason may be a little bit more pleasant for me than it's been in the past. It just may be because we don't have the Eagles, you know, touting and pounding their chest that they were in the Super Bowl and all that. I'm sure I'm still going to have some of the 49er fans, but not anything like the uh, Eagle fans. So the Cowboys, I want them to understand, when you hear that clip, you play to win the game. You do. That's all that matters. None of the other bullshit. Did you win or did you lose? Bottom line. Did you win or did you lose? Because if you're not winning the Super Bowl, then it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. We're in the same boat as 30 other teams. We did not get the job done. The question is, is what will we do to fix that, I will say that maybe getting Mike Zimmer, we'll see how well he fits if this is just a, a, a reach to the past of when we were great or if time has passed him by and this is one of those things to appease the masses. Jimmy Johnson on the advisory board. Jerry Jones apparently listening to others like Jimmy and I guess Micah, although it's kind of like, unfortunately, what always happens with Cowboy fans are, is we always get divided against each other. You know, either you're, you're for Dak or you're against Dak and you're fighting. And now it's beginning to seem like Micah has become the Cowboys defensive quarterback. Either you like Micah and everything else and you believe what he does, or you hate Micah. Because we got people that are now, just like they say, trade Dak, just saying trade Micah. You know, and Micah is getting blowback because, you know, as he's talking about, uh, I got a four-game season. There's no time to be tired and throwing D-Law under the bus. People are looking and saying, well, it wasn't like you had three sacks and made all these plays and nobody else followed. You were just as bad as everybody else. In which case, those who live in glass houses shouldn't cast the first stone. So we're, we're always fighting. We're always fighting. But, you know, the, the dust will clear. You know, come April, we'll start having OTAs. We'll start getting back in the locker room and things. But at least we're hearing people kind of taking responsibility for what happened. You know, CD Lamb saying, I got to grow up. Dak Prescott, you know, I got to play better. The, you know, the, the Jones is saying, we got to go all in. We're at least hearing the right stuff. But as always, money talks and BS walks. Now we're in the second day of being able to tag players. The question is, is will the Cowboys do any of this? There was an article on um, this morning um, who's the article? 
do, 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 do. give credit where credit's due. Um, by Alex Bastine, who was talking about tagging players. I don't see the Cowboys franchising or restricting tagging anybody because the only candidates you would look at would be Stefan Gilmore, whose market value is probably about $10 million, $11 million a year. If you talk about the tag price for him, it would be $18 million for a cornerback. That would be way overpaying. So <laughs> nick that one in the bud. That's not going to happen. Tony Pollard, who was tagged last year. Cowboys have a tendency to run a back in the ground and say, we'll see you later. That's gone, you know, with, with Tony Dorsett. It's gone through with um, DeMarco Murray. It's gone through with Zeke Elliott. And I'm pretty sure it's probably going to happen with Tony Pollard. I don't see them franchise tagging him with a $12.1 million hit. And I certainly don't see them tagging Rico. Um, Rico finally got an opportunity to play as a role player and may be picked up by somebody. You could do what you did with, say, Terrence Steele and do a um, tender to him, a restricted tender, I think it would be called. And a tender basically holds his rights. Well, okay, there's a couple types. You could have the tender price of first refusal which would mean that you sign him to this tender, it would be $2.8 million. Um, but then somebody else could make an offer, and then you have the first right of refusal, which would be um, you know, one where you could say, if nobody gets you a tag, we got him for 2.8. There is, of course, the restricted tag, but that would be like $4 million, And I don't think that that's what you want to pay for Rico. So don't look for the Cowboys to be doing any of those tags. Now, we hear, of course, Tyron Smith wants to continue playing. You know, as much as everybody says get rid of him, he did have a all-pro season, although I'm not sure he was a pro bowler, I would say. I'm not sure he was an all-pro. But, but we'll see how that works out. Um, I, I, I believe that you'll see Tyron Smith here for the next two years. That's just me. The Cowboys hold on to players usually too long um, and don't want to move on. And Tyron Smith getting back on track and playing as much as he did last year, I think, has restored confidence in the Cowboys. Now, the big question is, as we go through and start figuring out, you know, Jerry Jones has said we're going all in, which all in is going to have to mean, if you're saying all in, is getting some free agents because you don't have the draft capital to restock a team. You have 16 free agents that either have to be re-signed or replaced. And if you're talking about replacing them, it all in means I'm replacing them with better players. All in means I'm trying to get somebody like on the scale of a Chris Jones, if he's available or going out and getting a Brandon Ayuk who they want to trade for, or a uh, Patrick Queen at linebacker. Those, to me, are all-in moves. Now, I don't know what Jerry Jones's definition is, but one thing that truly has to change, because the Cowboys, I will say during the regular season that they probably overperformed. But you saw their issues of stopping the run and a lack of really good running games consistently. Once they got to the playoffs, they truly underperformed. They looked like they were sleepwalking through against Green Bay. And I think, honestly, what I honestly believe happened is the Cowboys thinking about their win streak that they had at home. We're invincible here. We're playing at AT AT&T. Green Bay Packers, seventh seed. We got nothing to worry about. They came in there like it was a bye week. They came in there knowing that they were going to get the win. And Green Bay came in and they punched him in the face. They punched him in the face and they didn't know how to react. And when they finally reacted, it was too late. And that's the crazy thing about football is it doesn't take much. You can literally take four or five plays 
four or five plays in a game that can change a game completely. Four or five plays is usually the difference between winning and losing. I don't care if it's a a one-point game or a blowout. They're game-changing plays, and unfortunately, the Cowboys didn't make any of them. And that's what happened to them. I would rather, instead of hearing what D-Law said, you know, maybe we were tired. You weren't tired. What happened was you overlooked them. You took that that, that winning for granted. You came in there half-assed. And that's why you lost. You weren't tired against Washington. You weren't. You guys steamrolled their ass. You came in there figuring we them boys, and you got your ass whipped. Plain and simple. So the question is, are they going to be able to change? Now, Micah with Stephen A., had some great points and stuff because, you know, they always want to trash the quarterback and everything else, and he made good arguments against it. But he kind of threw his teammate under the bus, and I'm curious how that dynamic is going to be because D-Law actually played well in that game. It wasn't like D-Law, you know, had 10 penalties and no tackles. So I want to go to ESPN and listen to them talking about the change in culture because, honestly – that lack of desire, that killer instinct, that being able to go toe for toe, taking a team's best shot and giving it back is what's missing. So, so that's that part of it, and we'll see whether we all agree or disagree. Besides Patrick Mahomes, right. what other quarterback in the AFC has accomplished anything to get more credit than Dak? Joe Flora. Josh Allen. Did he finish? No. But they got it further. It doesn't, got it doesn't matter how far you get. If you're going home and you're matter. not tearing the ring, it doesn't matter. What have they done? They've done more than that. Josh Allen almost made it to the NFL uh, Super Bowl. He made it to an AFC Championship. It doesn't matter. He couldn't, be, he couldn't beat the number one guy. It doesn't Joe, matter. Joe he Burrow couldn't beat the number one guy. He couldn't beat the number one guy. Joe Burrow beat the number one guy. And then he lost to Stafford. And then he lost to Stafford. He lost to Stafford. What is it's going like, on? Yeah, really, what are we doing? I mean, I, We're in the <laughs> Matrix, man. He took the blue pill. So, so, look, let me make myself perfectly clear. That's magnificent. That's magnificent for us. That's magnificent for Steve. The only question I have is, who told Micah Parsons it's a good idea at 24 years old? He's not Shannon Sharp, retired and in the Hall of Fame. Why is he sitting there yelling back and forth with Stephen A like That's they are literally doing an episode of First, first Take? First Take. He doesn't know. That was he First Take, it. and it was magnificent. He, but why is he doing it? He doesn't know what he doesn't know. Exactly. That's but he thinks he knows everything. He's 24. The veteran version of Michael Parsons is going to be squeamish when he looks at some of the comments and statements that the younger Michael Parsons, yo, has made. Aren't we all? He don't know that he doesn't know, right? And he has a lot of maturing to do, and he doesn't know what this game's all about, even though at the tender age of 24, he thinks he's seen it all and done it all. He has a lot to learn about the business. And the problem is right now, because everybody wants to be able to put their voice out there, he comments on too many things. He's worrying about his post-career during his active career at the same time. You can't do both. He needs to focus more on being a football player because everything else comes with success. And he doesn't want to be one of these guys that, that, that yeah. never, never really won anything. Does he want to be Brandon Marshall, a guy who has a tremendous career but never really accomplished anything? That's how you become you mean like part you? of the elite. Uh, conversation to players can't be the best player that never won nothing or did anything yeah. or got on a big stage. Yeah, there's a difference between getting clicks and getting respect. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And see, he's, he's not respect. exactly. He's not really gaining respect by making these outlandish statements. Respect is kind of like I, I just think about to the days of Ronnie Lott and back in the old. I, you know, see, I don't want to be. I don't want to become that get off my lawn oh, guy. Yeah. Right. But really, that's what it's about. See, when like that question when when um. When you were talking about like, where he said, like, what quarterback in the AFC right. has done more than Dak? Like, I can tell you this. From talking to teams in the AFC, from talking to people at the Kansas City Chiefs, I'll tell you the kind of quarterbacks that they fear. And I love Dak Prescott. Didn't nobody fear no. in Dak Prescott. Right. 
They fear Josh Allen. They mm -hmm. fear Joe Lamar. Burrow. They fear Joe. Mm -hmm. They fear Joe because of his mind, because they feel as though he can duel with Patrick on the same level. Yeah. They fear Josh because they think Josh is just a freak. And, and it's hard to really defend. So when he's talking about like that, that, that kind of stuff, that's just, you're right, that's just good media stuff. I can stuff. say Jordan Love. It really doesn't do anything, though. It's not doing anything. But wait, I, th I think we're, look, that's an interesting point. Yeah. But here's the point. Why is he doing my job? My, I, literally, my job is to sit well, around you know going, what? well, one quarterback in the AFC, that's a topic bar on the bottom yeah. of the screen on Get Up. Which AFC quarterback has accomplished more than Dak Prescott? What and the hell difference you know what? does it make? You know what? Why is Micah Parsons talking this about This is exactly it? why Emmett was saying what he was saying. That's yes. what I mean. That's no, there's no yes. doubt. See, look, yes. the Cowboys built up the reputation, built up this following to where we talk about them like we talk about them because of what Troy did, what Emmett did, what Irvin did, what Williams did, Larry Allen did, and everyone else that has come after them are just riding their coattails and benefit. It ain't because of nothing they're doing on the field. Mm -hmm. It's not because they're winning championships or having some kind of like, some kind of like transcendent type of play mm -hmm. on the field. It's because of what those guys did. And see, that's the thing that right now is starting to run real thin with people yeah, and get real tiring. In fairness to Micah, no, it's because it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not about killing him. He's a phenomenal player. No question. But he has to learn how to be a leader. And being a leader, what comes with that is experience, which to no fault is all, he doesn't have it. He thinks he has enough experience. But he's 24 years old. That's There's not an excuse either. No, Ed it's not Reed, I was there with Ed Reed. He was 24 years no, old. No, no. He was a leader. Because, because I'm trying to... Yeah, but I'm he had Ray Ray with so him, too. This isn't about ripping Michael Parsons, but he has to understand that if Emmett's, if Emmett Smith's words didn't cause him to take a pause, mm. that's a problem. Because Emmett, what he said to me, that was, that was mind-blowing because... Yeah. For him to speak like that, because it's, that hit the nail on the head. It's becoming white noise with Micah. Yes. And it's not about what you say. It's when you say it, and people don't respect that. He's losing respect not only, you know, I believe around the league, but also within his own organization and his locker room. Like, leader, attitude re reflect leadership. And he's not reflecting uh, the proper attitude of what winners say. That's well, what... You know what? He, he's talking about the right things, but just I say less and do more. All right, see, so like, like down in Kansas City, like you don't hear their defensive Chris league. Right? Jones. You don't hear them saying this kind of stuff. They just do it. They just go out on the. They don't sit there and go, you know, on a podcast and go, you know what we got to do? We got to make sure that 15 knows if he throws an interception, we're going to have his back. They don't need to say. They just do it. If you just do that and you just win, all of a sudden, you know what? All the different interview offers and, and all kinds of stuff will come at you tenfold. You don't need to sit here and drum up all this kind of crap. For us to talk about that really doesn't mean anything, you, but the, you're right. You're right. It does give us stuff to talk about. Look, I mean, it's it magnificent yeah. content, yeah. but that's not his job. Exactly. And, exactly. and I think it actually is detrimental to his job. I'm old enough that I was doing talk shows when Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin were playing. And you know what? There were people who questioned Troy then. Sure. There were people who said, oh, look at his numbers. They're not what some of the other elite quarterback numbers are, blah, blah, blah. You know what Emmett Smith didn't do? Yeah. He didn't go on an interview and start yeah. comparing him to the best quarterbacks in the right. AFC. See, they you just, just take care of business, That's right. and then that answers the question by itself. All right. Okay, so there we have it. Cowboys culture. Can we get it changed? Can we get them playing where they need to be? I sure hope so. All right, good people. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, we are going to be doing what we do here at the Red Brick House, getting more shit done. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Peace out.